Welcome. It's time to put the saddle and table on this Herbert Junior Mark II surface grinder. Look at this. I think it was Machine Shop at the bottom of the garden who said that his Herbert grinder dribbles oil for weeks after he's used it. And this hasn't had any oil in for at least a month, I would think. <laughs> I need to find a tray for this to sit on. How do I make this interesting viewing? That's the problem. Bit of ISO 68. I have almost none left. I need to get some more ordered up. Some time ago I pumped some oil into here and the pipe feeds this manifold and this distributes the oil to all of these locations and I checked that the oil was flowing so I know this is clear. We can worry about these faces once this is on but they're pretty good. Here goes. It's quite heavy. Each keep strip is held by five screws but this one has an extra hole in it because that's where the oil feed comes through into the table from underneath. Well that's one on this one. They've curved it at this end to match this casting shape. I won't clamp this up tight until I've got the other one on so they're balanced. I don't know if that's necessary but that's what I'll do. Okay, that's the oil pipe fitted. I've got the keep strip on. Now I've found that if I clamp it up tightly, I can't move the table. Well, the saddle, I mean to say. So that needs to be looked into. But you can see how that oil pipe flexes. So we'll put a bit of oil in here. And we'll just see that the oil's coming up the pipe uh, this way. Well, if the camera looks wonky on its side, it's because it is. That's the only way I can get this angle. So let's see if we can get any fluid coming over the pipe. It's ISO 68 I've just put in. It'll take a few pulls. Oh, do you see it? You maybe can't. But it's just come down here and up here, so that's good. Right, now we can have a look from the top and see if it's coming up from the table outlets. Uh, saddle, saddle outlets, table outlets, whatever. The pigeons are quite loud today. We've got lots around here. So when we had the solar panels, we had the bird protection fitted. Because if they get under the panels, they can really make a mess. It was quite expensive, but it was worth it. Well, I can see a bit in there and a bit there coming out. Look, if I do another pull on it. Oh, <laughs> it's obviously working. Oh, there it goes. Look. Now, how about this one? Let's I don't know if I can block that one off. Oh, it's rising here. I don't think my thumb's going to make any difference on that. Here it comes, look. Good. Excellent. There are five Gib adjustment screws. Handy this light, look. They're a bit fiddly to get in, so... I'll just push them in and then sort them out off camera. This table's pretty heavy. fitting the table gib. These holes for the adjusters are drilled in at an angle. So if you're careful you get it the right way up. So I'll just put a bit of grease on it to hold it in place. I remember getting this table off was quite difficult. It was very jammed. It may just have been all the rubbish that was in there. We shall see. Let's see if we can do this without knocking the gib off. Not going to be very easy. Or oh, putting my back out. Oh, where are you? 
<laughs> can't get this in. Oh, there we go. Come on. Oh, my coat's stuck in it. Look. Oh, for goodness sake. <clears throat> right. I'll advance each adjuster to take up the slack to begin with. You know, most of these screws were burred over. I don't know what sort of screwdriver people were using. <laughs> I'll fully adjust up the gib on this table once I've got the handle on here, but first I need to put this assembly back on on the hand wheel. Note the two tapered locating pins, but what I've found is there's a seal here, just like an oil seal, but there's no lead on the front of this shaft. So I'm just going to put a lead on it, because I'm sure it could damage this. You might think if it was going to, it would have done already, but nevertheless, I will put a small lead on that. I think that'll help. That's it. <clears throat> Come on, yeah. It's quite stiff, this. Need something to tap it with. Three screws to hold this. So this back plate just provides a mark there for the graticule on the dial. Is that the right word? Graticule? I'm not sure it is. Never mind. You can tell these machines are handmade. Now that hole, it looks like it's just oiling the dial, the dial unit, not the bearing. But there is a groove in this dial in the centre there. Can you see it by my finger? A little difficult to show, but it looks like the oil from the shaft comes into that. So they have thought about it. To be able to adjust and then lock the dial, there's a pin that's gone in there and it's got a point on it and then there's a tapered wedge which goes in this hole and then hopefully this dial will go on, which it has, and then later uh, when I assemble this part I'll put a screw in the end and that will lock it for us. There's the screw. Handle. Hmm. Oh. <laughs> this. Jeepers. These gloves are great, but you have no grip. That's the problem. Now this goes on the end, 
I'm not quite sure of its function. It might be for adjustment, for, for uh, end play or something, I'm not sure. We'll see. So I need to tighten this up and then I guess tighten that up to lock it, I suppose. And then this screw goes in the end like that to lock this dial. Well, adjustment is exactly what it does do because if you over tighten that, you can't turn this easily. So it must adjust the amount of free play somewhere in this sandwich. Right. And this, I suppose, must therefore lock it in place. Good. Right. And now, so this back dial is movable. Tighten this up, it won't be should be locked, which indeed it is. Well, we're getting there, aren't we? I've still got to nip up all the adjustments, you know, the uh, keep plates and the gib on the table. Travel stops. So when set, these come up against this to limit the movement each way. And these have a screw, there's a little screw goes in there actually, to stop that going off the table, I suppose. Stop it going too far. Yeah, like that. So that one, that screw goes in there. I don't really know what this is supposed to do. Perhaps when it's completely to the left, it keeps something covered. Ah, yes, here we go. That's what it's for. Next, the wipers. Now these blocks go in there and there. I suppose like that. Do we clamp first? Let's clamp first. Oops. A bit weird this. Let's have a look. Yeah. Right, might have to have a couple of goes at this. Mm. I'm going to loosen it and push them from the sides. Leave it at that and see how we get on. Ditto this end, although these are individual, going like that. And then there's a cover that goes on with two little screws just to cover that gear up for safety. Right. If I push that in and nip it now, hopefully that will keep the wipers against the table. Same other side. This one sticks off the table quite a long way there, doesn't it? The wiper comes to the edge of the table, but this is way past. You can't get them the wrong way around, so I don't know why they did that. Right, handle next. And if I remember correctly, it comes from about there, round to about there. So we'll put this screw upwards so I can get to it when it's there. 
there's no key on it at all it's simply um, clamped tight but this is very strong so it takes a lot of force to clamp it I remember I had a lot of difficulty getting this off just getting the screw undone I think I've got this right this machine has an 8 inch travel on the table so if I go here I'm just keeping it on the wipers there and I go the other way same at this side just keep it on the wipers so having set these to get that travel measure it up and I can see that that is just short of 8 inches don't know if you can see it but look 8 inches are about where my thumb is this side of it so I could probably get a quarter of an inch more on travel I might just look for that I don't know can't go any further because it's coming off the wipers don't really want that it's quite a lump isn't it all together that's on there for display purposes only because I need to clean it up a bit yet but to answer a question as I said this table has an 8 inch travel and this is a 10 inch vice 10 inch 10 inch so you cannot clean up the surface on this grinder as somebody asked nope mine's the same here's a question for you how do you lubricate these I've got another Eclipse magnetic vise but it's lower profile and it has a screw in the bottom I take that out put some oil in and pop it back in again job done but this one there doesn't seem to be any way to do it now I'm certainly not going to take it apart because there's all sorts of warnings about losing magnetism so we'll just leave it as it is for now it's not too bad once you get it going but it's not that easy anyway you might know I thought well I think that'll do for this one it's looking pretty fine isn't it but it's not finished yet because I want to make a balancing attachment for the stone so I mean here's the new stone that's what it sits on I'll make something around here or at the back I'm not sure yet to make sure this is balanced because you might have seen that I've got this running on a static converter which I made and there was quite a bit of concern in the community that the unbalanced phase could give me a problem with the grind finish so so at least to give it the best chance I'll make sure this is balanced now if I find that the finish isn't good enough then I'll fit the inverter which I bought as a kind of uh, panic measure <laughs> but I'm still kind of hoping it, this may be okay on the static converter we'll see won't we but um, yeah so this is next